lose your mind. Yeah. Everyone, we are back for our closing keynote, and this is a fun one. Um, we've got Nick Harcourt from uh, Spark Network, and he's going to be interviewing uh, Fantastic Negrito and Tyrone Ross Jr. And they're going to be sort of kicking off um, the Spark Community Initiative. I think you'll really enjoy this. All right, so it's Nick Harcourt, and I'm here again for Spark, and I've got Tyrone Ross and my friend Xavier, aka Fantastic Negrito. Tyrone is uh, a financial consultant and startup advisor who is very active in his community. He's also the founder and financial consultant at 401 STC and the director of community at Altruist, where he hosts the Human Advisor podcast. And I know there's a couple of other things you do, and I'm going to ask you in a minute. Fantastic Negrito is a two-time Grammy award-winning songwriter and musician whose most recent album, Have You Lost Your Mind Yet? Perfect title for this year, is out now. And uh, he's been giving a lot of his time this year for various virtual fundraisers. He's also a, uh, an urban farmer. So welcome, guys. Great to see you again. Thank you. Hello. Great to see you again. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for having us. Thanks, man. So Tyrone, um, you just took on something else as well. Um, a, a new yeah. job you're actually going to be moving out to, not that far from me here in Southern California soon. What's the, what's the other gig you just uh, kicked into? So I'm the CEO um, of OnRamp Invest, um, which is a uh, digital platform for financial advisors uh, to onboard their clients into digital assets. Um, we're going to have a retail app as well um, to educate new investors um, to what it means to be in digital assets, which is the future and very important to me, um, aligns well with what I care about. And that's getting, you know, the black community, especially introduced to the power of digital assets, especially Bitcoin, uh, which I believe is, is digital social justice. So I'm um, excited about the opportunity. And uh, yeah, I'll be joining uh, my team and building this out in, uh, in, in San Diego in, in nine days or so. So I'm excited. You're going to be out. You're going to be out with us on the, on, on the left coast or as we like on to the call left, it the yeah, right coast. At the left coast. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It'll go, it'll go from being the left coast to the right coast. Exactly. Coast. Absolutely. <laughs> and my, my man, uh, Xavier, fantastic Negrito. Um, you're working on new music, right? You were just telling me before we started that you're, you're taking a complete left turn. Taking the left turn and um, uh, just writing from the heart, from the soul, and just trying to remain a contributor because it's one of the amazing and beautiful things about becoming Fantastic Negrito five, six years ago is that I made a decision that I was going to be a contributor and that um, was such a more happy and productive way to go as an artist. And uh, I really encourage other artists and people to contribute. When you're contributing, man, it's a beautiful thing. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about. You know, I wanted to use this time to, to basically talk about, you know, how people can contribute, how people should contribute, uh, and really just for the discussion to be around your passions, your, your individual passions uh, around change and community, and how you think that the crowd who are watching this right now on Spark um, can help. Maybe Tyrone, you could, you could kick it off. Yeah. Um, again, there, there's so many ways to attack this conversation. Um, and I believe in the power of threes, right? And, and, I, and I, sp I spoke previously about exposure, education and empowerment. But I think the major thing is everyone just starting where their feet are, right? Where exactly where you are in your community. If your community is not one that needs help, cool. Go to the community on the other side of the track. Right, expose yourself to what other people are going through. Expose yourself to organizations that are doing the work that are grassroots. Expose yourself to a different network of thinkers and people that come from different backgrounds and have been exposed to different areas of life that is foreign to yours. And begin to lock arms with those people and truly understand what they've gone through and how what they've gone through can be a resource to what it is that you are trying to do. So I feel like that's, that's how we, and, and that's the thing is like, I think we have to redefine community here. You know what I mean? And, and I think once we do that and then we realize that we're one, right? We have to rebuild America from the ground up. We have to make sure that everyone feels included. Uh, but I think that's starting in our own community, right? Where your feet are right at the places and the schools and the, and the programs where you don't want your kids to be, that's where you got to go. And we need to go there now. We need to go as big 
as the problem is. And the truth is we have it. We've thrown right a little bit of effort at the problem. This is a big problem. We have to start throwing big effort at it. So um, Xavier, what, what do you think in, in, in your own community um, and, and how you contribute obviously um, what, what's your passion for engaging, let's say, younger kids? I mean, I know you have a, 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 a whole bunch of them. I got a whole bunch of them, and I take I takes care of my kids, yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I think uh, that that's kind of what Tyrone said, is that it starts with the dude in the mirror. That's where everything starts right there, is that the power of choice. Everyone born living and breathing has the power of choice. You know, get off of Fox News, get off of M MSNBC, get off of all these news networks because they're not news net networks. They're, they're propagandists and they're selling you something. So get off that stuff and start talking to each other. That is mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing you can do is be kind to someone, man. That's, that's revolutionary. You know, look at people in their eyes and talk to them and be kind to them. And, and um, engage in um, empathy. Empathy is such a big word, you know, just because you did okay, doesn't mean you get to look down on people that didn't do okay, or did not have the, the tools, or did not have the avenues. And one of the things that I do is I, I live on Revolution Plantation, and that's where we, we grow and we produce vegetables, eggs, Anything that we can produce is a good thing. And the more we get our hands in the soil, that is extremely therapeutic, especially for African-Americans, because the soil is what traumatizes us. And I feel like we have to come full circle, get back into that soil and see the benefits of that soil. You know, I go hiking up here in, um, you know, Redwood Regional Park and Tilden Park here in the Bay Area. I don't really see people of color up here. And I always think to myself, wow, this is strange in a city that is so diverse. But I think there's something that you know, we see those woods and those trees and we're like something in our DNA back there. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's some memory where we're, we're like, no thanks. What I see community gardens. I don't see that many people of color. But we can change that. And what we have to do is what I've done with my kids and with my nieces, and with my nephews and with my neighbors is get kids in there early. They love it. And they love cleaning the chicken coop out, learning about composting, um, pl planting seeds, germinating, see them in the greenhouse and then see them come to fruition into the, into the garden. It is it's therapeutic and it, that vibration is so healing. And financially, you can turn around and sell those, those products. I started out as a, as, uh, as an, uh, a weed farmer a marijuana legally, marijuana cultivated here in Oakland, California. And it changed the whole trajectory of my life and my friend's life. My friend was a writer, was broke. I told him, go ahead, stay broke. I'm gonna grow some weed. I'm gonna take care of you, you keep writing till you get a gig. He calls me up one day and he goes, hey, I got a gig. I'm like, what is it? He goes, there's some show called Empire. This was years ago. We didn't know what it was. We're like, what is Empire? I said, sounds stupid, I don't know. Hey, and look what happened. It was the biggest show in America. <laughs> that all came from economic empowerment through agriculture. We can, we will, we must accomplish all these things and we can do it. It, it also came about from supporting one another though, right? I mean, this, exactly. is really, this is really what it comes down to. It comes Supported. down to community. Yes, yeah, stop worrying about profit so much. I'm sorry to, for a financial consultant, I must sound crazy. Tyrone, no. Yeah, no. no, okay, I always no, say that. Stop. You're spot on. And and I I did a I did a podcast interview. God, my days are so long now. It might have been this morning, but I did a I did an interview this morning and he was talking about, well, you know, if we give, you know, how do we determine the ROI and how do we determine I'm like, sometimes you just gotta give. There shouldn't be ROI attached to it, right? It should just be giving and doing because it's the right thing and minding your business. Whatever that person decides to do with that, it has nothing to do with you. They were in your eyesight and your line view to be able to help them. Now go mind your business. And then when somebody else comes along to help, help them too. But I agree with that. It, it can't always be about profit. We can't tie no. humanity to profitability. We have to break that chain. I agree. Um, 
and and that's why I know it, it it absolutely you know I'm I'm trying to get the financial services industry to to see that we just need right. to go and just give and give because two things one the benefits of giving are incalculable the smartest minds in the world can't calculate it is exponential that's the first thing the second thing is my mother taught me a long time ago the more you give you'll never want you'll never want but if you keep giving and you keep giving, you will never want a day in your life, but you have to get committed to giving, but detaching yourself from the outcome. I 100% agree, man. Like when I was, I was given my boy, Malcolm Spellman, that's what I'm talking about. I gave him half of my profits from, which were very good 10 years ago when you were growing marijuana. Now it's, eh. But back then you were getting $4,000 for a pound. I don't know. Street people know what that means. That's yeah, I, yeah. that's that's great. Yeah. Well, right now people get twenty two and they're happy. So there was three of us. One dude bought a house that's worth a million dollars now. Never even finished high school. One dude is now you know he became a writer. He's writing for Marvel. The what is the Falcon and the Snow or something? The new the next Marvel thing. He's on that. And you know and I'm fantastic, Negrito. But it came from exactly what you're talking about, Tyrone. It's like you know what. I don't need no, I'm not worried about contracts. I'm just, let's just do this because our contract is that we invested in each other as friends years yes. ago and that's gotta be worth something. Something, yep, 100%. It would, it, it would appear to me there's two, there's two sides of this equation though, isn't there? There are like um, people who are perhaps lower down the economic ladder, whether that's people of color or other minorities or, you know, white poverty. I mean, poor white people. Hey, this, let's, don't forget them. There's plenty, there's yeah. plenty of poverty to, to, to go around. Right. Um, and, and so one side of it is, is, you know, people who are marginalized finding a way to support each other. But then the other side of it is like, what about the people who, who already have enough and perhaps have more than enough? How do we engage <laughs> them to to uh to, to volunteer and, and put that passion into communities less fortunate than themselves well i think i think first of all that just real quickly i'll say it is that and, and tyrone does this for a living i do it through music i do it through music i just played for tom steyer and cat taylor's farm you know he's one of the 2500 billionaires in the world and i i'm you know you go befriend them you go talk to them invite them over to where you are show them what's going on see the difference. I tell them this, these kids that you're ignoring that we're driving past, they're going to, you're going to hear from them. If you don't pay attention from them. Listen, we ignored a lot of people and look what happened in politics in America, Wh wherever you are, left, right, Republican, Democrat, you've got to look at this landscape where people are so entrenched in their ideology that we're shattered as a nation. We're broken. We're spiritually unhealthy yeah. as a country. And that's because of this whole thing of, oh, just me. And as Tyrone said, I, I, I will send my kids to those schools or that neighborhood. Well, guess what? That neighborhood done showed up. And the poor white people we were laughing at, ah, oh, ha, ha, look at them. They showed up. They're here. Yeah. We're seeing them. So we got to yeah. include everybody, talk to everybody, those wealthy people. Hello. Yeah. Pores, and, and just to go back to that, poor is a color, not a condition. I mean, poor is a condition, not a color. Right. And there, there are poor people of all stripes. Whenever I go into these inner city schools all over the place, the white kids resonate with me, too. You know why? Because I can speak to their condition. They don't right. care about who I am. Oh, you can speak to you know what it's like to have the lights off. You know what it is to have yeah. your mother boil hot water. So because there's no heat on. Right. You know, you know, what is it? rice? You can turn into four different meals with the right condiments. Right. Like <laughs> like when you can do that again you get that chuckle and that laugh but that comes from that trauma that experience of that so i think that I that's it. the first thing and the second thing is listen people who are billionaires or very wealthy they like data so i like coming with data right and and just letting them know all right fine we can talk about data but you may not like what you hear you may not like the two million two million americans have no sanitation in running water right two million that, that civil engineers have said that our water infrastructure grades at a D, a D in America, right? So when you start to dig into these numbers and look at the, the amount of children who are, who are uh, hungry, the, the amount of people that are unbanked, the amount of people who don't have access to affordable housing, the amount of people living on the street, you can't ignore those numbers. So you go with data, right? And fantastic, we're saying is like you, you, 
you get into these environments. I've, I've been around billionaires too. And it's like, well, I'm going to shine the light over here. This is where you really need to be putting your money. Harvard doesn't need any more. Can we agree? You know, he, oh, yeah. And they'll tell you, sure. But they want, well, I don't know about this. Tell me, where is it? Right. right. And, yeah. and I think that's really what it needs to be. So we, I think we would all agree as you start to scale up in life, money can insulate you from a lot of different things, right? Like, and they ha they can buy their way into a whole nother world that people can't even fathom. So you can't blame them in that regard, but I do blame those of us, right? They come from the bottom and then get in those rooms that don't say nothing. Right. And sit there quiet. No, we got to speak truth that eye to eye. This is what I come from. This is what I had to fight through to get here to be able to sit at a table that you were given. I had to fight for this seat and I'm not even guaranteed this seat. You, you, right. you were born with your seat. You know what I had to do to get here just to be able to sit next to you, right? And a really cool story here, and I'll keep it short. So Reginald Lewis, when he died, was the richest black man in America. Just did a billion dollar transaction, very wealthy. His legacy now is incredible. His wife, Lorda Lewis, is an incredible woman. Had the chance to actually have dinner at her estate in New York City. And she sat next to me. To, I, first of all, I was blown away that I was there. And I'm having, we having dinner. She invited us all to stay. The kitchen was bigger than any house I had ever been in. Right. But we sit down and she's sitting right next to me. And I'm like, oh my God. And she's like, tell me your story. And I'm just telling her about my story or whatever. And as I'm talking to her, I can see she was engaged with my, my experiences and things that I had gone through, but she understood it because her husband, right before Pat, had gone through that same thing. So she knew, all right, yeah, we need to start activating these type of things in the inner city to get more kids to be lawyers and, and private equity and financial advisors or whatever. And she was like, man, you had to overcome all of that to get here in front of, and she knew the people who were sitting at that table. I had no right. business at that table. You know what I'm saying? So we just need to make more room like that, but it's getting in these rooms and being honest about our backgrounds and then shining a light where there's no light right now. And we have to keep them keeping the light on it by any yeah. means necessary. Right. I, I know that, uh, I, I know that um, F Fantastic Negrito plays a lot of shows. You donate a lot of time. For, yes. for various causes. Um, I'm going to ask you both this question. Would you like to point any of the attendees watching this to any particular organizations that you think that they should should check out? Well, I, I have a few. Uh, mine would be Oakland based Black Earth Farms. You know, the, I'm all about agriculture. I'm all about ur urban farming. I'm all about empowering people and giving them the tools to get things done. Also, San Francisco housing development. I just did some work with them and it's about hey, getting affordable housing in San Francisco. Those are a few of my organizations that I work with and believe in. All right, so hit the Google and check those out if you want guys and uh, Tyron. Oh, I, I mean, how much a long time list, I know. <laughs> how, much how long do you have, you Nick? I mean, it's it, again, what, one, the one I will say, because I know Troy Prince and I know what he's going through and how, how he's fighting for these kids, man, wallstreetbound.org. If you go to that website and you look at what he's doing and not inspired, and it's crazy, he's actually having Lloyd Lewis, he's bringing her in to talk to these kids, but he's taking inner city kids, exposing them to Wall Street, kids that have ne like no exposure whatsoever, and they are trading and doing everything and lights out on kids that have privileged their whole life, right? And talent just doesn't get that equal shot. And he's showing that. Right. And he's having a, a poker tournament coming up at wallstreetbound.org. If you are not impressed when you go on that site and see that something's wrong, but he is exemplary of what everybody should be doing. It is incredible. And, and you, can, you can change a life by just engaging a, a, a child Absolutely. and, and oh. showing them something different. And then, you know, they they become somebody they would never imagine that they could become, and then they can share that. I mean, it really just starts at the bottom, really, right? It's just like getting involved. It starts at the bottom, Absolutely. that's it. Yeah. That, is, that is it. If we get everybody to understand that, oh, we cooking with grease, as my mother would say. Like, that's it. It starts at the bottom, the bottom. Yes. 
broken broken people heal the world that is right. the truth the brokenness from fighting from the bottom but when we get more broken people to the top they know to look down their tears seep into the people into the passion the purpose the commitment of other broken souls and they all heal but the broken people got to cry from the top and not scream from the bottom let me, let me ask you this before before we wrap this up um you know my world is also the music world um, it's expanding a little bit now with my role at Spark, obviously. I'm talking to guys like Tyrone and learning a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, it always comes back to music. Music has gotten me through the worst times in, in, in my life. And, and I think that, you know, we're, we're, li we're living in incredibly difficult times. If, uh, if I was to ask you guys about a song or an artist that you always come back to, you know, in times of trouble... Um, uh, Ty Tyrone, why don't you start? T tell us about a song or an artist that, you know. Yeah, so it's, you. there's a song called, there's a gospel song called Stand. Um, and, and again, the, the key lyric is after you've done all you can, you just stand, right? I I've done it all, but I'm not going to fall. I'm going to keep my hands up and keep throwing it at me. You won't knock me down. I will stand. And there's a song right now uh, by a rapper, Benny the Butcher, you know, thank God I made it. And yeah. he talks about the part where he's like, you know, we, we had to sleep on these twin beds to get a Cali King, right? So <laughs> I, that's that's real life, you know. So it is right. Yeah, just, any any song, any song like that, that's this really near and dear to the struggle, always is a, is a nice injection for people. That I, had to I know. Fight I know. I know. When, I sorry. I know when we talked last time, you weren't sure who the who uh, did that song stand. So while uh, fantastic Negrito, you tell me about your choice. I, I'm going to look that up, and we'll find yeah. out who it's actually by. Um, well, mine is pretty basic. Um, but very powerful. And we're talking about the bottom. We're talking about the roots of the whole tree. I always go back to Robert Johnson, his uh, complete collection. I feel like it's uh, the greatest album ever recorded because of its visceral simplicity and its rawness. And it basically is the uh, founding father of all popular culture and all the music that we enjoy today. And I always go back to that. Yeah, and he was he was he was the first guy. And I think again in an earlier conversation, we talked about like somewhere in the in the nineteen thirties, he had like half a day once to record, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's he changed the world. Uh, changed the world. I'm finding yeah. a song. I'm finding a song. Donnie McClurkin. I just found it. Yes. Donnie McClurkin. <laughs> yeah. Donnie McClurkin. Right. Well, listen, it's so cool. It's always fun to talk to you guys, whether it's individually or, or together. And I appreciate you taking a minute to, to share this with the people who are watching this. And, uh, you know, continued, uh, just continue keeping on. Thank you so Absolutely. much, Johnny. Be safe out there.